uh, meeting and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Kathy, you know what? I forgot to send out just there were some just general notes from the last meeting and I apologize again for um, me not being here, but um, I don't I think we're we can kind of OK and kind of proceed, you think? I, I think so. But we also because it was sort of a non meeting, I think that we have to approve oh. the minutes from the December meeting. Okay, officially approve those minutes. Yes. Okay. So, um, can I uh, and can I have a motion to approve the minutes from the December meeting? Uh, okay. Moved by Bob Hyde. And is there support? All right, Kathy, you want to support that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Great. And then we have our official adoption. Um, I just before we don't have any presentations tonight, um, so we'll just go to public comment. And do we have any um, public uh, anyone who wants to address the task force? Rob, you are our public. You might as well just join the task force. Yeah, really, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> okay. Okay, I don't see that he has anything. All right, so we'll just uh, go ahead and um, see students. I see we have Anna and Zoe here. Good to see you. Welcome back. Oh, and Alicia's here. Thank you. And Whitney's here. Wow, we've got like over half. <laughs> yeah, Kyle's still working, so he would be here otherwise. So everyone's okay. committed. Um, but yeah, y'all, I don't know. Like I, I can give a little bit of an update on what we're working on, how it's going, sort of the format. And then if anyone else from the team wants to jump in, you are more than welcome to. Um, so yeah, right now our main priority is working on a document with um, essentially ongoing engagement recommendations for how y'all can keep the broader community and partners engaged in the implementation of the plan. So really the main components of that document um, is starting with a sort of reflection of the engagement we've already done how it went, what worked well, what didn't work so well, and then a few like recommendations out of that. So some reflection on the work we've already done and sort of lessons learned. And then the other part will be essentially um, recommendations organized in a sort of tiered system, knowing that at any point, the available sort of like resources, capacity, funding is constantly changing. And so that's a way for you to sort of um, look at these recommendations based on what your what the township's capacity is at any given time. Um, so that sort of provides some structure. Mm -hmm. So we really have like a lowest um, resource requirement, lowest capacity, medium, and then highest. And so within those categories, we're providing recommendations around um, equity approaches. So, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion approaches um, to engagement, partnerships and collaboration, human resources, um, feedback and evaluation, education and communications, engagement events. So quite a bit there. Um, and then each of those, we have some um, recommendations, some guidance, and also providing some other like external resources that can give you more details. So um, our goal is really for it to be both useful and um, provide enough resources that it's actually useful, but also fairly digestible, straightforward, um, not too complicated of a document, I guess. So that's where we're at right now. We're rolling pretty well. Um, 
Yeah, and we'll get the draft to y'all. Should be pretty soon. Our our goal, our timeline for this, I'm not sure if we shared this yet, but our timeline is to have the final document done by the end of February. So we'll have that out to y'all pretty soon. Yeah. Um, anyone want to add anything to that? <laughs> I think that covers everything. I think the only thing I would add is that me and Zoe are also um, communicating with the Post Carbon Institute to hopefully put out an article just about what Sio Township is doing in terms of their climate action plan, but also in particular the way that we've been able to like engage the community through surveying. And then so we'll keep you posted and definitely share the article with you when we ever get it up online. That's it. Okay, great. All right, any questions for our, our CS team? Well, the only thing I can add is to say thank you. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I think we're going to um, really miss, you know, having uh, the support of um, a SEAS team, project team, because we weren't successful in getting another one. However, um, I have requested um, a, a couple of interns for the summer to kind of carry on some of the work. And we'll see, hopefully, um, that will get put in the budget. Um, and we'll, we'll see where that goes. Because I think um, having, um, you know, I, I think you've laid a, a great foundation. We were able to have a couple interns, you know, start us off. And you guys have, you know, just exponentially um, moved us forward. And then hopefully we can have a couple folks um, help continue the trajectory. So thank you very much. Absolutely. And um, Jam, we're also happy to share once those internship opportunities are, you know, sort of approved and moving forward, we're happy to share that with, um, with folks in our program who I'm sure would be very interested in having experience interning with SIO. So happy to share that on our end as well. Okay, well, great. Yeah. Then um, we'll, we look forward to, um, you know, that sort of report, especially with the ongoing engagement. And I'm working on, I'm doing sort of the um, general um, part of the uh, um, environmental, the the plan, if you will, I'll call it the plan because it's too many words. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, you know, having, being able to take like your executive summary and take pieces of that and put it into the report and then reference that as, you know, sort of what we've done around community engagement is, is really nice. So I think you've done a really good job and, you know, I could cut and paste and then reference the whole document. So thank you for making it very flexible. All right. So moving on. Um, I we've got um I think materials and waste energy and transportation have their um templates they've kind of uploaded their templates um so I, you know if if folks want to review those or just kind of give an update of of where they're at um Kathy and I um and are kind of taking on the bulk of some of the writing and I want to say that if you guys have you know, looking at the Royal Oak kind of um, plan as our template, um, they kind of, each group kind of had a vision, um, you know, any kind of definitions um, that, that you think are important to be able to communicate the language that we're using um, to put that in, um, as, as well as then your template. Um, resources that you think are important that we want to make sure we have links to in the plan. Um, and then any metrics that you think we should, um, um, you know, uh, that we think the township would be able to um, track. Now, obviously, we can't track our own greenhouse gas emissions. That's going to be kind of with the county, but we certainly could. There might be some things that we could do to track the progress of the plan. So if you have some suggestions, that'd be great. Marty, welcome. Hi. I had trouble getting in. <laughs> but you made it. 
I made it. Here you are. Here I am. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So, um, yeah. So materials and waste, do you want to kind of give us an update or if you want to, if there are certain, um, you know, feedback that you want on your framework or anything, um, please go ahead. Uh, no, I mean, we did the original work. Bob actually started it out. And then at the last minute, a day or two before the last meeting, I got into a panic <laughs> and actually <laughs> not just panic, finally found the time to get in there myself. And I filled in a whole bunch more yep. data. And that's basically where we're at now. Uh, I was going along with what you said we needed now and not any of the stuff in the future. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much, you and Kathy, for taking that and putting it in the present format, because uh, that's one less thing for us to do. So now I think what we need to do is just what you're doing now, defining the things we need to plug in there next. Uh, and some of those are going to depend on some of the further progress we make with composting, uh, with Recycle Ann Arbor. I am pleased to say that we did finally, I had that second meeting with Recycle Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. uh, what's happening there is Brian Weiner, who is the gentleman that did the presentation for us, is retiring. And that was partly what was tying things up. Uh, the person that's taking over for him is Sean Adams, which is really kind of convenient because he's a person I've worked with before on some various IT and phone related stuff when he was at Calvert. So we already knew each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so the three of us met and basically went over what, where we were before. Uh, Brian seemed to have pretty good notes as to kind of things that we were looking for. Uh, I suppose if there was any bad news in it, I did maybe get a little hint that possibly it's going to be a little more expensive than it was before because I think they've had some price increases. Uh, I think because it was fit so well in our budget that we had previously, I don't think it would become a budgetary issue, but it might become more expensive. But now we're kind of in the same thing again. We're just waiting for, in this case, Sean to get back and and that's why I said we really need something in writing that we can really go over and refine and, uh, you know, and take it to the, the next step. So mm -hmm. uh, the second part was, is we did briefly talk about Sio Farms. I actually heard just sort of uh, off the cuff price what they thought for a couple of containers for Sio Farms where they would pull them. I think they said twice a month or something like that. And the number I heard is extremely doable with Sio Farms, not something they should complain about at all. Now, not to say they won't, but <laughs> to me, sounded very, very reasonable. Mm -hmm. So what's got to happen now is I need to talk to our property manager here, Eric, and I'm guilty of that now. I have not got around to that. Mm -hmm. But that's the other part of it is to get a meeting with him and Sean and see if we can put something together again, sort of individually with Sio Farms. And, and I think we probably all agree it's probably going to be a little trial basis because we just got to see what the usage is and versus the abuse. Uh, but fortunately, we do have a site that there's lights on it and some security cameras. So that helps on the abuse part, you would think anyway. Mm -hmm. So just the bottom line is we did have some progress there. It's still kind of going slow, but there is progress. And uh, I feel optimistic that we'll get something together, hopefully in the next couple of months here. So, yeah. And then we'll be able to fill in more stuff in the, the framework too. Yeah. One thing I was thinking about um, from an ordinance perspective is certainly, I, I'm thinking, could Sio Township require I, I know we could, all new developments, we could put that in an ordinance that they need to provide recycling. Um, and I don't know what we, you know, could do. We probably don't have any, I, I don't know if we could make it, um, you know, a uh, actually a township wide kind of ordinance that um, everyone needs to provide recycling for you know, multifamily and so forth, but we certainly could do that for, for, uh, new, uh, cause you know, what are the, yeah, go ahead, Bob. Are you worried that it might, uh, get pushback or, uh, or do you think it might be illegal to require it? 
Yeah, I don't, you know, it, it, that would be interesting to get a, a um, you know, an I'd opinion. say let them push back and, and yeah, we'll, we'll, get it, right. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it to them rather than worry about it ourselves. Yeah, but certainly I think that needs to be a part of, um, you know, the, a, Recommendation. a requirement for every um, new site plan coming forward and probably for any kind of you know, amended site plans that they need to provide, um, you know, for recycling. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that would be the planning and uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, what, what, what. yeah, it would be an ordinance that would come up from planning, but it would have to actually, be, you know, we're looking at a, a whole series of ordinance updates and because you have to have a, when you amend the zoning ordinance, you have to pu have a public hearing. So the goal would be to have a public hearing around a whole suite of ordinances that mm -hmm. are around sustainability and then um, forward those on to the trustees because they actually have to. And then I think there has to be a, a public hearing at the trustee level, too. So mm -hmm. it isn't like a, yeah, just do it kind of thing. Yeah, it's not a zip zip thing, but it, it's worth doing. Absolutely. In the future, so <clears throat> I, I think and we get the township uh, attorney involved at that point to evaluate it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we can make it an overall, um, I forget what those are called, but yeah, as opposed to a zoning ordinance, a, a uh, township, uh, yeah, a township ordinance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of like they're trying to do with the. Um, a noise. You know, as I'm thinking about it, maybe we wouldn't see as much pushback as what we might expect because mm -hmm. any multi home or, uh, res, you know, the places you're talking about, they're going to have to have trash pickup anyway. Right. You know, so typically they have some facilities for that. They're just in this case adding on the recycling component so that they don't become like Sile Farms has for all these years. Exactly. Yeah. And there is a space issue, you know, as well as a, a cost. But most, you yeah. know, I would think most apartment complexes and so forth, if they can find the space, they certainly can find the funding. It's not a huge... Well, and, and some of the trash will no longer be, I mean, some of the recycling will no longer be thrown in the trash. Right. So that the frees up some change. of that space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're always compactors. Hey, hey. Um. <laughs> Hey, Jen, yeah. what, what is the timeline? What does the timeline look like for those uh, changes that are being suggested? And, you know, yeah, there are um, a couple of items. One is cost and time. So um, what the Planning Commission has done um, is we're looking at um, asking in the 2023 20, budget. Um, for funds to do um, two kind of major projects. One is uh, a review of all the ordinances with regard to sustainability. Um, and then also looking specifically at the Jackson Road corridor as far as development placemaking, um, kind of changing the way that uh, we've been looking at that corridor. Mm -hmm. um, to make it more of a transit, multi-mixed use with um, more residential um, aspects. So those are the the two things that we've um, we were requesting in the next budget. All right. So it's us. It's our group asking mm -hmm. the board of trustees for. Um, the funding actually it goes through the planning commission as a part of the planning commission budget because they have to actually execute that with the planning consultant. Mm -hmm. To review the changes and ordinances that uh, we think ought to be considered, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then the other piece yeah, of that, there's a third piece, and that is our engineering consultant, um, a specifications uh, review, um, it, because they're the ones that you know, all of the utilities upgrades, the pathway specifications and so forth, they are, um, they're in charge of actually um, developing the specifications for those projects. And we want those specifications to also have sort of a sustainability element in it. Um, so, yeah, so I guess it's 
three items that the planning commission is asking from a budget cycle. And so that's how important some of, as each of these groups are working and looking at what they would want to accomplish next year. If there are some specific things, you know, like Marty, you, you'll probably talk about this, but you know, the canopy survey, you know, some of those things that we need to, that we want to accomplish that are, that are going to take resources. We want to make sure we get those in front of the trustees, pro, you know, um, I mean, actually by the end of this month, I mean, officially we'll be presenting the plan on the 13th, but we need to, um, if we want to get it in this budget cycle, um, we need to have those items um, uh, identified um, with, with some kind of, budget number. Yeah. I think we're going to have trouble doing that. But I think we gotta think in terms of a longer time frame for and that's and that's hurt. fine. And that's fine because I mean this is sort of the immediate thing. You know, if we want to yes. see something happening this year, we need to request the funding for it um now. And obviously there'll be I mean yeah, we're not going to turn this on a dime. So, um, you know, thinking broadly and also I think keeping our eyes on, um, you know, what's happening elsewhere, um, you know, in the county too, and hopping on some of the resources or some of the initiatives that they're doing. Because I, for, Tim, are you, I'm trying to remember the Washtenaw County um Conserva conservation district just got a big grant to do something and at some sort of inventory and so forth. Um, and I, yeah. Yeah. Like um, the yeah. And I think he had to do with farms, but um, anyway, I'll, I'll have to go back and, and track that. But so there are a lot of agencies countywide that are getting funding to do some things that we could piggyback on. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I read that, uh, Jan, but I don't remember uh, what it was. That was just a couple of days ago. Right, right. right. Yeah. I <laughs> and remember, I... but I don't. I mean, I'll, <laughs> I'll do a quick look at the... Yeah, same thing here. Thanks. <laughs> I'll do a quick look at the website and see if I can come back with that. Okay. Um, energy and buildings. Um, Dana, I don't know if you, you know, as you were looking at doing some of the write-ups, did Dana disappear? Oh, I think Dana disappeared. Oh, there you are. Hey, Dana. Can you hear us okay? We can't hear you. Where is he? He just went off mute and then back on mute. He must be, not be at home. Hey, Dana. Uh, he's going off and on mute, but I can't. Yeah. Do you want us to come back to you, probably? Um, I do want to announce that um, at the end, and this has to do with energy and buildings, that at the end of this month, um, the 2030 district is launching a commercial um, solar program that will provide technical assistance with an RFP um, that actually SIO piloted. We're updating the RFP a little bit on, based on feedback and so forth, but uh, an RFP technical assistance for businesses that are interested in doing solar. And with the, you know, the 30 Thirty percent tax credit um, uh, back, and also direct pay for nonprofits. We think, you know, there's there can be some momentum there. So that's something that is available to any anybody in Washtenaw County, any business, any nonprofit. The other thing uh, there we're launching is a uh, solar faithful program for any. Um, a, a religious nonprofit or house of worship that doesn't have funding up front to uh, do solar, uh, they will be able to engage with this nonprofit that will install the solar for them and give them a reduced rate on their uh, power. That is going to be 
Um, that same program is also going to move into electrification. So nonprofits, uh, religious nonprofits and um, uh, houses of worship can also, um, you know, change out their HVAC systems, their kitchens and so forth with, you know, sort of a long-term financing piece, sort of like an ESCO. Um, and, and I think the entity that they're using to finance that is going to be Black Power. So, you know, some, some interesting um, financing strategies um, coming through. So anyway, uh, Dana, anything else on energy and buildings? He disappeared again. No, he's just moved. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think connecting. You're you're unmuted right now, Dana. Turn the volume up. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll come come back and see if Dana has has anything else he wants to um, contribute. So, um, move on to transportation and mobility. Um, yeah, we've been mainly working on, I've been mainly working on writing. <laughs> so, um, that's kind of the focus there. The only other thing was, um, I was concerned last month with the fact that, um, public transit and some of the, some of the funding and the focus on planning for public transit and bicycle oh, yeah. and pathways okay. and so on were, um, moving, you know, because, Mm -hmm. TAP, because TAP had, yeah, um, ended. yes, because TAP had ended, there was some um, confusion about who was going to take that function over. And I did get in touch with a couple of people on the roads advisory committee to see if it was, it would fit with them. And basically I got maybe eventually, but right now they're kind of, they have their hands full just with new people on board and just getting underway. So I think that, we as a group are going to have to um, just be the advocates for it for a good six months or a year before, you know, other people are going to be taking over the charge. Yeah. So that's, that's basically what just want to report back on that because I brought it up at the last meeting. Yeah. I think it, one critical piece there is, you know, it's going to be interesting for the township because, you know, we've got um, the transportation millage, um, possibly roads millage, fire, um, you know, services millage, all of those kind of uh, floating out there and, and, and needing. Oh, then there's the DDA too. So a, a lot of decisions need to be made um, around funding um, many of these initiatives. So um yeah, stay tuned. And yeah, I think this, what's important, you know, as the task force, you know, works on um, the plan and so forth, there are, uh, we've identified a couple gaps um, of things that aren't really covered right now. And and one of those is that whole transportation piece that, it, that you know, now with the uh, parks, preserves and pathways, they're more recreational. And the roads is sort of and, and is focused more on the SAD and funding maintenance for the roads, but there's a gap around transportation planning as a whole, mm -hmm. um, which you guys identified, and I think that's really important. And then the other gap, both of these gaps you guys end up identified, is along with that is the whole housing piece um, yeah. and any cohesive um, housing. Um, strategy, um, especially around, you know, a whole diversity of housing within the township. So you guys uh, did a good job with, you know, identifying gaps. Dana, welcome. Yeah. We got your new computer fixed. Or Can, you working. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh. And see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I got a, uh, a Mac book and then I tethered a monitor to it. And so I was trying to do my work on them on the monitor, but it, uh, it, it wasn't listening. So I had to get back to the original MacBook. That was my problem. <laughs> okay. Anything else you've been kind of working a, a little bit on the, 
uh, energy and building stuff? And a very little bit, Jan. I <laughs> nothing. Okay. <laughs> I, got, I got your email. I'll be honest with you. I got your email, and you, and you said, "How how's it going?" I said, "I thought we were done." <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess I got a little more work to do, but to be yeah. honest, I got to uh, dig into that, I guess. Eh? So uh, what work do we have to do? We got to fill in the blanks on the rest of the rest of the uh, items, you know, the cost and schedule and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, kind of give some thought to it, but then they're sort of writing a little vision piece. You can look at the um, Royal Oak um, plan and they sort of had, you know, sort of a vision for, you know, your the work group area. And then sure. any definitions, we could copy and paste a bunch of their definitions, of course, or, you know, re what I was doing when I was writing, I had resilient Washtenaw up and then I had, um, let's see, the um, A20 plan up and uh, the, the Royal plan up and was trying to look at them and, you know, how they, you know, the different things and so forth. Yeah. But the Royal Oak plan is sort of the outline that we're using for our plan. Okay, so Jan, just to confirm, yeah. do you want me to try to make a hack at estimated cost and all these uh, items? Fill in the rest of that uh, matrix also, or not? Yeah, I think we're looking more like at relative costs. If you look at the way that um, both, you know, if you look at the wash resilient Washtenaw plan, I think they have some relative costs of things, especially around, you know, energy transition and so forth. And then um, also the Royal Oak plan, a lot of it was, is it, you know, you know, not very much middle of the road costs are very expensive, you know, kind of. Do like restaurant reviews and just yeah, like, exactly. You know, time. one, two, or three dollar signs. Yeah. You know, <laughs> or if it's extraordinarily expensive, add the plus. You know, right. yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Great. And then uh, well, one help. thing on yes. on energy, uh, Bob. I saw your email on uh, on uh, geothermal or, or whatever, and, and I installed a system this past uh, summer, so. I thought Excellent. I would tell you all that I've been able to stay warm this winter. So it's worked uh, worked well so far for me. Yeah, that's that's great. Also, if anybody's interested, I have a, um, it's a, a geo company that has a sort of a unique, if you're going to do a direct bore, like you don't have a lot of uh, land area to do a field. Um, they have a very, it's a, much more efficient than the typical loop where you have um, you know, just the supply and the return kind of going through the way that the, the uh, pipe is designed um, is really interesting. It sort of has an internal uh, supply and an external return or external supply. Well, anyway, whichever way it does. Double, it double makes, wall pipe? Um, actually, it's a pipe within a pipe almost. Yeah, a double wall pipe. So, yeah, kind of yeah. like that. It, only it's not completely encased, but it's it's much more efficient. And so, for every bore, you get more um, energy exchange out of the bore. So it, you know it makes a lot of sense if you're in a you know a, a confined site. And it, if so, if anybody has that, um, yeah, I'm doing probably a cold climate heat pump and maybe geo. I have to decide. Um, you know, I'm, I'm making that. We just had to replace a pump in <laughs> in one of our systems. So yeah, they're all 32 years old. Time to go. So uh, one thing I think it'd be fun is as people make some of these transitions, it would be good to document. This is what I did. These were the costs. This is who I used. You know, so we can kind of um, develop a sharing for you know people that are. Um, considering it because I can see people coming back to, you know, this committee and, you know, asking questions about, you know, uh, transitions and so forth. Yeah. Uh, we, we talked about that before. Mm -hmm. that yeah. Okay. Um, where can we, where can we put that information on the web, on our good, site? Good question. Um, well, <laughs> you know, one of those recommendations is to get our friggin' website, uh, to be more robust um, as well. Um, but at least if we can start documenting it, maybe we can find a, play, a way to share it. 
um, you know, maybe we'll find a volunteer who wants to do social media for us and we can have our own, you know, SIO sustainability, you know, page or something like that um, to, to put some of those things out there and give people references. I, we can have, I mean, we can do a lot with a Google Drive and just having, you know, you want to look at case studies or here are some, you know, folks you can call if you're interested in things. It can be somewhat informal in a way. All right. All right. So we're we're working. Um, anything else, Kathy? Did you did you finish up with? Yeah. You know, well, I just wanted to quickly um, just say about the parts that I'm writing up for each of the each of these groups. Mm -hmm. um, you are just expecting the groups to do the spreadsheet, right? Yeah, and, and I, I think Dina was trying to. I was trying to get Dina to tackle some of the other pieces, but yeah, mm -hmm. if. But so, obviously you can use as much help as possible, right? Well, what I'm what I'm wondering about is it would be particularly helpful because when I did, um, let me share my own, mm -hmm. the one that I did because I'm pretty much finished um, the transportation one. Great. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, and if you want to upload that into the, um, the plan folder that I sent out the link to, um, people could see it at too. Uh -huh. Can you see this now? Not yet. Not yet. Looks like it should be up. Hmm. But no. Okay. Whatever happened. Hey, all participants can share. Yeah, go ahead. You can see I the transportation. Okay. Um, what I wanted to say is I just went through, I had the Royal Oak one open in front of me. Um, I had my, our own um, spreadsheet and so on. And I just went through and I, and I'm, I'm doing this and I, and I'm now I'm working on the waste, um, sector and I've communicated with them about it, but basically I'm doing a kind of a vision statement first, which is what Royal Oak has. Then in bold, this is the definition of what's covered by this sector. It's still not shared. Did you click on it share isn't? after you selected it by any chance? Uh, it came up, weird stuff came up. I'm sorry. It's just, I could, I can't, Hmm. I might not be able to. Anyway, the, the thing that I could use the most help on from people is when you get to the um, the metrics, because I don't know what metrics you guys want to include for your sector. And I ended up, for example, with the transportation one, I ended up looking at what Royal Oak had, looking at what I was able to find information about. And for transportation, I decided metrics should be vehicle miles traveled, and I got a figure from Watts for that as a baseline. Um, <clears throat> transportation to work, the mode share, I was able to find from some kind community profile, like 74% people in Sio Township drove alone to work. Um, and percent electric fleet vehicles that we can calculate ourselves. Um, supposedly through the state, you can figure out what percentage of um, vehicles in SIO are registered as EVs. Oh, interesting. Um, I haven't been able to find that yet. If I can find it, that will be in there. Um, number of pu public EV chargers, um, and then annual motor vehicle crashes, particularly the fatal and serious injury ones you can get from the SEMCAD community profile. And I hope to get miles of multi-use pathways. Um, but I'm not sure who would have that. I have an email out to Anna, so I'm not sure. But um, you can see, you have to kind of go through and figure what you actually want to measure here. Mm -hmm. And I just did what Royal Oak does, which saying our goal is to make that number go up, or our goal is to make it go down mm -hmm. rather than a number. I, so, I think that's, it, we're, from where we're at right now, I think that's great. That's good. A, so let's, if anybody, if any groups could let me know those metrics that you want to keep track of, that would be really helpful. And also where you can find those metrics, because right. I think from SIO's standpoint, it's going to be very difficult for us to actually track specific metrics because we just don't have the staff and so forth. So if we can identify resources that are tracking the metrics that yeah. we can um, adapt or adopt as our, um, you know, sort of the, the, um, our measurements that that's most useful. Yeah. Some CAG has some really amazing statistics for specifically Sio Township. So mm. I urge you to check in with that. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll be in touch with the subgroups as I start working on their sections so that 
you can check and see if that's what you want kind of thing. And and just so, uh, Kathy, a uh, resource um, for transportation mobility is the um, 2030 district offers building-based, uh, and we could do it for, you know, all the buildings that participated in um in the survey, but we do, and I, I, I actually have to get back because Sio didn't tell me they were participating. Hmm. Uh, it's an employee commuting survey, and we do it by building, um, cool. and it calculates the greenhouse gas emissions associated with employee commutes. And uh, we do that survey every two years, so you can create a baseline and you can measure that. So we could measure specifically Sio employees. And it, it taught, and it's a, and the other, it's a, there's a planning tool too, because part of the survey is, are you planning to purchase a, um, an EV in the next couple of years? And, you know, obviously we don't have any EV chargers at this point um, with SIOS. So it, it helps as a planning piece. So that could be also, you know, participating in that survey every two years for our employees from an operation standpoint um, would be helpful. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's see who's next here. I just wanted to mention one thing that I encountered, and this pertains to what Charlie's group is doing. <clears throat> Uh, I read in the New York Times a couple of weeks ago an article about a town in Ohio, somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, uh, Columbus, uh, a small town that engaged the students in the school uh, with the issue of uh, food waste. And they had a program, the school collab collaborated on it, and the kids talked about it, and they started paying attention to what they ate at, at lunch and they found out that the kids tracked at home and were talking to their parents saying you you shouldn't be wasting all this food and they're trying to uh, maybe get a town township awareness of the importance of food waste and throwing away things and I thought you might be interested in the article it, it might be a plan Something that we, although we, we've got two school systems, so I don't know what, but we might get Dexter involved. You know, it's more within reach. Well, even our restaurants and our, you know, and residents, and that ties in with local food. It ties in with composting um, and, you know, just the waste of resources. Yeah. Goes right along with what Jeff has been pushing for. Yeah, yeah. With the Mar Marty, why don't you send that article to the group, and those that want to read it will get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, well, I. Yeah, well, is it a New York please. Times article? It's a New York Times article. Yeah, because you can uh -oh. actually, if you can do a guest, if you send it, if you you know do the guest selection, you can send it, and people can actually use it. And I found that you can send guests to a group email if you want. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll learn how to do that. I, I, I'm not a super ace at, at figuring out how to use <laughs> Witness the amount of time it took me to get involved <laughs> today. <laughs> hey, you're, you're, you know, you're doing that technology stretch. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, Andy, anything on um, our resilience and emergency preparedness? Uh, nothing exciting right now. We've got a, can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we're we're uh, meeting with Jan on uh, Friday to go over our, our draft and uh, hopefully uh, have, have more news next meeting. Okay, great. <laughs> It's progress, right? Yeah, every little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. So, Marty, did you have anything else? Uh, I know your group. Oh, yes. This, this weekend, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, our group is meeting on Saturday. I think uh, we've had trouble getting together. And, and as I press forward into the area that I'm on, I'm just swamped with 
option the, with the things that we could continue to do consider doing um and one thought we are kind of a tripartite what was assigned to us agriculture and uh waters and natural ecosystems which is the land and what's going on on the land and those are huge huge subjects um uh and um where I wrote somewhere. So we're nowhere near being able to report, and we may have to say TBD when we get to a report. Um, but we have a definition that actually um, Tim wrote for his agriculture one that I think for the vision um, kind of. Uh, and I think it will apply to all of us, all three of us, that is. A, a thriving local food system in all phases of farms, packers, processors, et cetera. Local citizens, too, uh, who understand the critical benefits that come from a strong local food system. Uh, oh, wait a minute. All right, this may not be the, the one that I'm looking for. Yeah, sorry. This is our vision for the group. A healthy ecosystem is the basis for healthy life. Maintaining the health of Sio Township's commons, our natural assets of air and water, healthy soils, along with the beauty of open lands, ensures a healthy and sustainable life for Sio's residents into the future. And I would have to say that's a, a beautiful statement, of a vision for our team. So. Get that to Kathy. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> Well, at least we've, <laughs> we've got a vision. Step one. <laughs> Step one. So uh, we're going to talk about the things. Uh, the agriculture is probably the furthest along. They have really focused on a couple of things, starting out with an inventory of SIO. Uh, well, the current state is a lack of knowledge. And that is true for the other two groups in, in our category. Um, but the definitions, I don't know if this is what you mean by definitions. Maybe I should go take a look at, at what they've done in Royal Oak. But um, is for agriculture, uh, regenerative, regenerative agriculture practices and to develop local food systems. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, so I think defining what regenerative uh, practices are, if there's a, you know, a sighting that you could do of, you know, what that is, that would be great. Um, you know, what we're going to consider regenerative agriculture or, you know, what standard we're going to you'd, you'd use for that. Yeah, we can do that. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. And then the current state is a huge lack of knowledge. But one of us has already started and I gather there's another inventory underway somewhere else. But uh, uh, the, the thought is to do inventory all the silo farm scene. Uh, that is the size, the number of farms, the sizes of the various sign, uh, farms, the type of production, what they, how they market, and what needs they are. A real inventory of what we've got. And from that, we would be able to identify needs and to develop plans and maybe uh, methods of communication. Uh, and metrics, well, I don't know. The inventory provides some kind of metrics and uh, we, we need to develop the data uh, and um, resource links. I don't know. Tim, any ideas? Uh, what specifically? Well, um, yeah. well your uh, Washtenaw County uh, uh, Conservation District would, would be a, a wonderful link for agriculture. Yeah, we, we've already approached that. Okay. Yeah, Margaret. Margaret has hasn't talked with them and had to even go for a what do you call it? A Freedom of Information Act information about it about the farms because apparently that's something that's yeah one of our <laughs> <laughs> one of our members has been digging hard to get a list of all of the farms in the township, let alone the county and she's got a list and we're we're in the process of winnowing it and you know because the, there's a lot of entries in a, in the list that aren't in the township but mm -hmm. 
you know, this is a township group and we're going to try to limit it to the township and uh, just as an inventory to see what kind of farms we have, how many how many acres are farmed, what uh, what sort of crops they farm and methods that they use and so on. Mm -hmm. So then. Jim, I kind of did an inventory of that myself. And, you know, mo most of the land is leased out and it's farmed by <laughs> non-sile residents, quite frankly. Um, yeah, I think that's probably going to be a problem that we do have a lot of lands that are farmed. That's okay. That's relevant. We'd like well, to. Well, yeah, the farm is in, in sile. <clears throat> We'd like Even to. Know. Okay. to uh, to answer a previous question, the grant that the conservation district received was for small farm sustainability on small farms. And the reason for that is that the federal government's uh, sustainability programs are geared towards just large farms. So the, the uh, they're going to have some inventories and surveys done of small farms to determine if they're uh, doing any sustainability practices and if not, you know, what it would take and if there's a needs to be financial incentives hmm. to help, help them with initiating sustainability in small farms. I, I remember reading that too. Yeah, and wasn't it also to um, calculate the relative um um, carbon footprint of smaller farms to see if they're different than larger farms in a way? That might be. That might be. I, I don't mm -hmm. remember that, but that might be, yes. There are just as an overview, the uh, you all know that the USDA is a huge program. Food stamps go through the USDA. It's a big, big, big budget. And, um, you know, the USDA has kind of been turned toward soybean and corn and, uh, you know, crops that can be exported <clears throat> for the last, you know, several decades. And it, it is very slowly changing its stance on that, you know, depending on which administration is in charge, it either makes uh, more quick, like it is now, it's making some quick progress, but still, I, so there's a lot of lip service and and uh, actual attention given to sustainability on farms and water issues and and um, you know chemical issues and such and um, and and a lot of lip service and uh, some attention being given to small farms for a change instead of just the big farms. So it's good to see it, it's not a lot. It's kind of a drop in the bucket, but it's a it's a signal that things are turning as they have to turn. And um, the Washington County Conservation District can benefit from all of that progress that is made by the USDA. I I think we're in a really good position because of. Um, I don't know the health. We have so many small farms. We have some larger farms. We have at least one dairy farm. And then we have, um, uh, you know, the Wren's farm stuff. I, you know, we have a lot going on in, in our township. So it's, it's a, I think it's a really interesting mix of, you know, sort of adjacent adjacency to a pretty vibrant, you know, urban area, not extremely high density, but, and then we have um, access to all of these small farms and, you know, folks doing some pretty interesting things. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Most, uh, I, I could go on about this for a long time and mm -hmm. I won't do that to y'all, but the uh, most, most of the food that people here in this township buy is from Kroger, Meyer, or, you know, uh, Costco or whatever. It, it isn't from local farms. And her, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that, but um, we can, there, there's a lot of uh, territory to cover in terms of supporting small farms mm -hmm. and getting people to understand that, the, the bit of extra money that it costs is actually, um, uh, you know, upfront money rather than paying for 
<clears throat> paying in higher taxes for uh, environmental cleanup jobs and, you know, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Which reminds me, Tim, like March is coming up and that's a lot of the when the CSAs get signed up. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if there's a way that, you know, if you it's pretty easy for us to kind of promote that on the website. We, we don't have you know great, great website sort of things, but we could also ask them to post it on the Facebook page. And, you know, if, if there are, you know, um, SIO farms or uh, who are promoting CSAs, we should, we should put that out there and even give it, you know, um, I know the newsletter yeah. was taking a hiatus a little bit, but. Um, I I wanted to speak, address that. One one of the issues that I I have identified is is communication. And um, particularly in the areas that I'm dealing with, they're going to, to be effective, they're going to have big changes for people in the township. And so I think that we ought to be looking to starting the communication process. And um, I'm thinking, how about our group, the sustainability group, start a little 100-word blurb in the township newsletter every time with some uh, sustainability issue? And I think that, you know, the the CSAs and the fact that uh, March is coming up, um, the 24th of February is when it would have to be entered into Mary so that we get it out, but that we might be uh, very consistently supplying uh, little blurbs to go in the newsletter, sustainability blurbs, um, uh, particularly some of the the things on my side, uh, well, in in our group are going to be huge. Yeah. And it would be really nice to get the public kind of going for that. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I think that's a great idea. Let me let me just add quickly the Land Preservation Commission for SIO Township, which I'm part of, and Marty is as well, is um, doing some buy protect sell on pieces of land, and then taking proposals from uh, you know public uh, publicly accessed. Um, bid for proposals about buying that land because it it gets sold for three thousand dollars an acre instead of ten or ten to fifteen thousand dollars an acre because it's been protected by the uh by the commission and by the you know the leverage that we use with federal state and county dollars that are <clears throat> doing the same thing so that's one of the programs that is active and um and is important because it makes farmland affordable for small farms. Well, anyway, and for our I, big cow farms, <laughs> the Renz farm, that's the perfect example. Yeah, and I've got guests arriving. I've got to jump off, but I'll I'll uh I'll I'll think about the CSAs in the township. There aren't many, but I'll see if I can round up a list of our township CSAs and yeah, if you could take that and and be our first uh communication, sustainability communication, that'd be great. Do that. Well, yeah. actually, did you guys read the 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 last we had a whole big spread in we it? We did. Yep. We did. Very good job. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm thinking more in the line of something that somebody could grab onto. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, I might be interested in blah blah blah. You know, yep. I yep. could actions. Can yeah. I can I can I really quick um, interject yep. on this subject here? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just googling off while while we were talking about it. Um, the Ann Arbor Library is having a CSA fair on oh. March fifth. <laughs> That's normally taken, I went to it once when it was at the farmer's market a few years back, but basically they're all, they, I think they have to sign up by February 20th, farmers, and you basically, you can go there and look at the tables and get brochures and and talk to the farmers and get information about all the different CSAs that, I think they're the ones that go to the farmer's market, but I'm not sure. You know, I was wondering about that, and Kathy, thank you. When is that? Um, you know what? I'll just I will send a link. Let me just put a link here. 
in the messages. Where is it going to take place at? Anti Republic Library downtown. Inside or in the parking lot? Um, it probably says on the on this link. Go to the link, and it's it's information about it. And there's a deadline to sign up if you're a farmer. And oh, can you send it out to all of us? Yeah, I just put I just put a link into the messages, the chat. Okay. Oh. Okay. Where that? Okay. I see it. I've got to get no, off but, now. But hey, uh, thanks, Tim. No, I think there's a lot of a lot of good stuff. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I know that this can seem tiresome, all this work. <laughs> <It can't be. laughs> well, it's, I have some more to talk yeah. about. So, <laughs> okay. It's long reaching. So keep the faith. Mm-hmm. It, yes. is. it is. Especially, I, I, I think all of it is. It is mind boggling to think of some of the 2030 goals. Mm-hmm. Well, the. These, uh, at least for us, and the things that I'm going to talk about next, are things that you kind of shake your head and say, my God, we should have been doing this all along. I'm scared that it hasn't been done. Um, uh, And so uh, let me just continue into the area of natural ecosystems and waters were the other two areas. Now, obviously, in the waters department, uh, we have a biggie, an elephant in in the corner of the room. But there's another whole thing. And this was an article I could also send when I get to sending. There was another New York Times article about um, systems, septic systems in Cape Cod. I don't know if any of you saw that. Um, but apparently the, all the, the thumb area, the curve in, at, on Cape Cod, uh, they don't have public water systems and so the people have been settled there for two three hundred years and they've been using septic systems and um, they haven't been all that well monitored and so they are uh, very much concerned about the quality of the land that uh, is using these septic systems which have not been upgraded and you know had all the treatment that they should and it's it's possibility of becoming a big big public health problem And I'm thinking, well, what do we know about septic systems here in Sio Township? And what I've learned is that, well, septic systems are routinely uh, checked when you buy a new house. And after that, there is no routine or formal process for checking septic systems. And that, that, I think, is a problem. And I'm thinking, well, that's something we probably ought to be addressing. Uh, So that's under waters. Can I say something about that too? <laughs> I was I'm sorry. I just I just happened to read up read up about this recently. Um, Michigan is the only state in the union that does not have a statewide policy. Washtenaw County is one of something like two or three counties in the state that have their own policy, but it's pretty mild as you yeah. discovered. I, I I I feel like there's some things that we should be doing as a task force like asking the board of trustees to advocate with our state legislators to get this put in place. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd like to start with the county health department. You know, yeah. let, let's think. Now, <laughs> now, Marty, actually, you know, you spurred me to contact two entities. One was the Washington County Health Department. And that is something that there have been at, in the last legislative session, there were two bills that were put forward that didn't go anywhere, and they're going to try again. Um, and there is a coalition uh, working on this. And then the Huron River Watershed Council, um, that they were discussing making this one of their um, oh, you know, right. priorities and having a statewide um, you know, uh, septic policy. However, we could advocate for the county um, to do that. However, the, the big thing is funding. Who, you know, you've got to be able to have the staff, the funding, um, et cetera, to do those inspections. And, but I think you're right. I think that should be one of the. Um, that's, well, that's one of the things that we, we're ready to, to actually advocate for. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there's another one. There's another <laughs> elephant in this room. Uh, and and this one has to do with um, over, well, imperviousness. And uh, again, this is work done by the, the Watershed Council. 
then they've put out a couple of books. I, I think you you received them. I, I linked it to them at least. Yeah, and those should be part of, you know, when we have some references or some resources, make sure those links are in that section of, yeah. Yeah, it, it should be. It makes fascinating reading. But uh, basically, I, there is a should be a relationship between the quality of the roads and the amount of uh, usage of the roads in the township. And that's all kinds of roads and the amount of construction in various zoning areas. Uh, so, because a lot of our roads are gravel roads. And I learned that gravel roads are divided into five categories, you know, from, you know, really bumpy to pretty good, pretty well maintained by the road commission. And uh, there's, a, um, you know, they have a whole chart in the, in this book, that uh, they sent out uh, that relates to uh, the quality of the road and the amount of uh, water runoff from the roads w compared to the number of houses on uh, per acre on the property. And they have a whole standard on that. And I'm thinking, well, if we have people who are building individual homes, and I don't think that the planning commission really gets into the individual home business as I recall. No. Nope. We're, we're looking at bigger we, we do products. have jurisdiction over private roads and that they have to provide stormwater management for the roads, but we have no jurisdiction over the individual of um, the number of houses that are built along a road is something that we maybe ought to be looking at. Well as I say, every time I, I move a stone, I see 20 more that need to be moved. <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting, you know, confusing, well, which is know, why I, I, I can't do it. Yeah, right? the priorities come in. What are the big What are the big items and what are the things that we can? Okay, well, in mine, in, 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 okay, we've got the agriculture uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the other natural ecosystems and waters. Janine is doing waters and I'm trying to push her in the direction of septics because I think that's very important. Um, but I... I took the area tree canopy and imperviousness and then clear clear waters for uh, which Janine and I would work on together but you know on imperviousness you know what's the runoff uh, from rooftops from gravel roads from hard paved roads from parking lots um, and I uh, have can say that uh, I have, one member of my team, whose specialty is uh, satellite imagery of land spaces. And he's working on uh, satellite images for the township. And we already have one that the Huron Watershed Council had from 2010. And uh, Chris Olson from the Watershed Council told me that there is a group at SEMCOG that's working on an update to 2020, which I think would be really great. One of the things that that uh, imagery does, the one that uh, Chris Olson sent, is it shows uh, water, hard ro water runoff from rooftops and roads and driveways, and then trees, tree canopies. And um, there is a way to really do a more detailed assessment of the tree, of the type of trees that we're talking about, but I'm not sure we're going to get into that. But we'll hear more from uh, Norm Roller, who's doing it uh, on Saturday. But anyway, that that is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. And then if we go along, what have we got? The current state in SIO, I would have to say, is a lack of knowledge. Uh, and what are we our actions? Well, to go after filling in that lack of knowledge. The metrics. Uh, TBD, mm -hmm. resource links, TBD. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of where we are. But I don't have anything that that Kathy could write, <laughs> write up about. Well, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, you're uncovering. Uh, you know, I you're think still, it, it, you're still uh, yeah, uh, it, rolling over those rocks. Um, but <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. But and, one and, thing, you know, I want to um, a couple things. It, I think that from um, the stormwater management perspective. I think, uh, one, we do um, have, and I think the water, uh, Washington County uh, Water Resources Commission is going to up, 
upgrade its standards again. And SIO uses their standards for our site plans. So, um, you know, with our lot coverage, our stormwater management and so forth, I think new developments um, have, have reasonable stormwater management. Our weak links are twofold. One, existing um, uh, developments who, that were developed before we had stormwater management strategies. And only if you change 50% of your site do you have to comply. So we need to look at that ordinance and see if that could be tightened in some way. I, there are always costs, but um, I mean, rainfall volumes are something that that is that's it's one of happening. the metrics yeah. that we're. Well, it's, it's just like the septic system. Yeah, you know that yeah. we we would have to initiate a new. But we can do this or locally. We can what? do this in Sio Township. The septic thing is a county. Is it so of, yeah. we have we have kind of we can we can do this with our ordinance. The other one is we have no control what people do with single family homes, and so yeah. that's really it, you know more of an. And issue. that's a big issue. From what I read in this in this mm -hmm. thing that the the watershed council produced, it's that that as you build more houses along a gravel road, the imperviousness increases mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and becomes very threatening. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. And I don't know if we can, you know, if how, you know, we could be, in, we could look at, does anyone regulate that? And why don't we regulate single family homes as far as stormwater? But anyway, okay, but good. Okay, we are. Where we are. Yeah. Jan, I keep going back to Evan Pratt's presentation mm -hmm. in which he said that the number one pollutant contributor to Honey Creek is the Jackson Road Corridor, the mm -hmm. runoff on the road. I mean, that's, uh, well, okay. if that is indeed the case, that should be something that should be a high priority to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. Gotcha. And, and yeah, what goes in our storm sewers is pretty amazing. <clears throat> <laughs> Don't ask. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so I um, just want to touch base on our, our schedule. Um, and Bob Hyde and I, well, actually four of your planning commissioners have signed up for the citizen planning certification series um, that MSU Extension is doing, um, which meets on Thursday evenings <clears throat> for six sessions, and one of them is our next meeting. So I wanted to ask if the group would be willing to meet on the first instead. Um, and that would be a Wednesday evening. I've already got it written on my calendar. Okay, great. I'll have um, the make sure our um, notification gets changed then tomorrow so that we will be on Wednesday. And thank you very much. Um, I'm excited because, um, you know, anything you can do to get a little more um, continuing education is helpful. And this is supposed to be a really good, like, six-session course. So, and we've got four of our planning commissioners attending it. So, I mean, that's good. Um, also, um, we're planning on doing our our plan presentation, and Marty will work on where we can get you guys to um, on March thirteenth. Um, and and I have no problem with you know groups saying we need more data, and this is the data we need to do we need to in order to move forward with our sustainability plan. So um, I have, it, I think that's perfectly valid um, to say, you know, we need this, this kind of information and whether we- Well, I, I think the, this satellite imagery stuff that we're working on mm -hmm. has great promise. And I, not only that, but I think it can, can become something that becomes popular in the township for people to see because it will be quite yes. dramatic. Yes, and yeah. then would you like to look see at your what metrics. the sees? Look at your metrics. They're there. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Very visible. Very easy to communicate. Yep. Yeah. That's that's cool. So on the 13th, 
Um, the planning commission is, is planning a working session. Uh, you may be interested from seven to eight, we're having um, Mandy Gruel, um, who is the actually supervisor for F Pittsfield Township. But more than that, <laughs> she is um, an urban planner and sort of their sustainability guru and so forth. She's sort of the Missy Stoltz, uh, if any of you know Missy, C Missy Stoltz from Ann Arbor. She's sort of the Missy Stoltz of Pittsfield Township. But she's the one who really looked at a very different vision for Celine Ann Arbor Road and worked with then um, Ben Carlisle of Carlisle Wartman. We use um, uh, Doug Luan, the same planning consultant, um, to um, kind of look at that corridor and, and transform it. And that's one of the things that the planning commission wants to work on next year. And it has to do with transportation, you know, walkability, all of those things that um, uh, several of these groups have some overlap. So I think it, it'll be a very interesting discussion. Um, so, uh, you know, if you can join from seven to eight, that would be great. And then I would like to ask a person from each of the work groups um, to present sort of uh, the high points of the plan. Our goal is to have as much we, as we can in writing and certainly the templates of the actions, um, you know, formatted and a, sort of a draft plan uh, by uh, at least sent out to everyone, including the public by March 10th. And Kathy and I will help you guys get as far along as we can um, with that. Um, and that'll be the rest, like I'm, I'm projecting from eight to 10 will be presentation, discussion and so forth. I'm gonna also invite the, the trustees and, um, you know, and anyone else uh, to participate in that uh, working session. So that'll sort of give us um, a chunk of feedback. Um, so hopefully we can then, um, you know, update or whatever and and get the, the plan approved by the a recommendation for approval from the planning commission because the trustees have weighed in that they, they do want to um, actually uh, work on the approval for for this plan, which I think is a good thing because if you approve it, then you know ho hopefully you you will fund and act on it. So, um, any questions about that? I'll again, we'll probably put a a, a PowerPoint um, uh, format together and uh, give all the groups some support um, in in kind of, obviously it's gonna to have to be plan highlights, uh, maybe your vision and some key strategies and some specific funding requests in, you know, for the year or the uh, near future that people, that um, we want uh, the planning commission and the trustees to think about. So it won't be the full plan because they will get that, but, you know, sort of the, the key messages that you wanna get across. Okay, so uh, the other thing is, um, um, you know, we are gonna be pushing for someone to take kind of overall responsibility within the, um, the staff. Um, they've started a few discussions on who that might be and how that might be accomplished. And more importantly, how to integrate sustainability within the operations of the, the township. Um, so I think those are some big picture things. And it, and a lot of that is, you know, looking at the township organization. Um, so luckily, um, you know, it seems like the trustees and so forth are uh, kind of honing in on, you know, with the township manager role. And, and um, they're also looking, I guess, at a maybe a project manager type. And so there's some options um, and we wanna make sure that, you know, sustainability and that oversight and that integration of sustainability can happen. And they're thinking about those things as they're looking at the organization of the township. So, okay. Um, any, other, any other questions before we kind of go to our public? in the CS team and see if there are any comments folks would like to make. I know it seems like a heavy lift, but I think 
you know, once we get some things on paper, um, remember that this is um, the plan will be sort of incorporated into the master plan. So it'll be, you know, reviewed on a at, at least a five year basis. And um, I think, uh, you know, it's a it's a living document. It isn't, a, you know, um, a a thesis that gets published and and that's it. This will be a living document that we'll be continuing to work on and, and implement. I think the other thing that in the implementation phase is uh, it's pretty clear the Environmental Sustainability Task Force needs to continue to exist to move the work forward. So all of you guys have been serving <laughs> for uh, an ocean of time, um, but give some consideration to, you know, some ongoing efforts and, um, you know, how we can, you know, integrate with some of the other committees in the in the township so that we're not siloed. And um, and uh, I think uh, Elizabeth Laporte, I don't think could join us tonight. She was hoping to, um, but she is very interested in, in joining the group. And Janine, Janine. Yes. What's that? Janine, oh, oh Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth, oh uh, yeah, Laporte, she retired from the University of Michigan. Yeah, yeah she ran the um, Graham Sustainability Scholar Program. Uh -huh. Um, so, uh, and then, uh, there's another, uh, Nadine Wang, um, isn't quite ready to come on a board, come on board, but she is very interested and she has a, she's a retired, I think, mechanical engineer. So, um, you know, as you're out there and, and connecting with people, um, look for folks that, uh, you think, um, might, you know, join the team and, and be a part of moving this work forward. And I'm also interested, I mean, I, I realize that not everyone can serve for multiple years at a time, but if you're willing to continue, um, you know, do let me know. So we can keep on keeping on. All right, with that, uh, any more, um, Rob or any of the CS team have any other comments before we adjourn? All right. Well, um, thank you all. And it's, um, I, I've really um, been wowed by uh, everyone's uh, digging into research and commitment and how this group works together so well. I'm just, um, yeah, looking forward to kind of the um, getting through this piece of the work and moving on to getting it done. <laughs> So thank you very much. Thank you. And all the work you're putting into it, Jane. Cheers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have a good evening. Thanks, everyone. You too. Goodbye. Bye. Good night. Bye. <laughs> Recording stopped.